Donald Trump's cognitive decline is rapidly accelerating. His speech in New Hampshire was as unhinged as you get, where he repeated Nikki Haley's name over and over again and blamed her for the January 6th insurrection. He also referred to the climate as the climb, compared his conduct to pedo priest who Trump says get absolute immunity like he should. They don't. And he repeatedly talked about passing cognitive exams and taking cognitive tests like all the time. Speech also was in front of a pretty, pretty small audience and very low energy. We'll talk about what went down. Ron DeSantis went down. He suspended his campaign. I think it was the worst run campaign in presidential primary history. Last week, I believe it was Ron DeSantis who said, you could be the most worthless Republican, but kiss the ring and Trump will be okay with you. So this week, Ron DeSantis looked in the mirror and did just that. Speaking of which, MAGA Republican Elise Stefanik looking in the mirror and doing just that as well, trying to become Donald Trump's VP pick if he gets the nomination. She previously and recently called the January 6th dangerous insurrectionists hostages, and she's now saying Trump intentionally said that Nikki Haley was involved in the January 6th insurrection because he's playing eight-dimensional chess. He did it on purpose, trying to compare Nikki Haley to Nancy Pelosi as part of another unhinged conspiracy that has been debunked. Folks, this is propaganda that would make North Korea very, very jealous. Also, the E. Jean Carroll federal defamation trial has been delayed until Wednesday after juror number three called in sick and Donald Trump's lawyer, Alina Haba, claimed that she was exposed to COVID over the weekend. Alina Haba requested a continuance, which federal judge Lewis Kaplan granted over E. Jean Carroll's lawyer's objection. So trial will now begin again on Wednesday. So naturally, Elise Stefanik and other MAGA cult members attack the judge for granting Trump's lawyer's own request for the delay. Again, propaganda that would make North Korea or is making Kim Jong-un jealous. Also, back to the world of normalcy. The stock market hit a record high today. President Biden just released some new powerful campaign ads. Vice President Kamala Harris hit the campaign trail, focusing on women's reproductive rights and our democracy. And also, we are one day away from this live recording from the New Hampshire primary, which Nikki Haley seemed to let slip away. I want to talk about that and more. This is the Midas Touch podcast. Ben, Brett, and yes, we've got Jordy here as well. You got the whole group. You got the whole gang. He's back. I was Everybody. Going for one show. I was going for one show. Jordy, you don't understand, though, like the, the pressures that like when you're not at a show, the, the folks watching and listening get quite upset with us. You guys did a fabulous job without me, but... Did, did I hear correctly that you promised the VP Harris emoji at some absurd membership number? Yeah, we, we did. See, that's we what happens when I'm not here. It goes off the rails. What's the number that we that, that, that we have to hit? <laughs> if there okay. is <laughs> one thousand, I, I know. That's why I need you here to kind of rein me in. Did you say I one thousand? So if there's one thousand, no. okay, that's not what we're members. doing. Well, we're gonna go. We're gonna go seven fifty for the VP Harris emoji. And we're going to carry it over from last from last week too. How many did we hit last week? We had around 100, 100 new ones last week. So you're Perfect. saying 650? 650. Okay. So if there are Stamp 650 it. new YouTube memberships, we will release the Kamala Harris emoji. And the way you All can right, become a member is hit that dollar sign below Keep on the YouTube channel. And as we said, we don't have outside investors here. So it's one of the fun ways that we build this network. So 650, we will release the vice president Harris emoji. Brothers, how are you doing? I'm doing well. I'm, I'm, I'm doing well. You know, this weekend watching 
Donald Trump up on the stage in these various interviews, uh, like the guy's really not well. The guy's really not well, and his decline is progressing at such a rapid rate that you know I don't even think we realize that he would just be declining at such a quick rate. But it is incredibly apparent with the things that he is saying, his constant confusion on stage, the way people kind of around him are reacting and are trying to vouch for him and say that everything's okay. Like, I, I, I'm not just saying this as a troll or, or anything like that. I think Donald Trump is in serious, serious, serious cognitive trouble. I think he is on a steep decline and this is only going to get worse. And the worst part about it is that nobody around him, none of his family members, certainly none of the people in the Republican party are willing to say anything about it. And it is getting scary out there to watch him fall apart like this at all of these rallies. And what I've noticed about these Republicans, and, and we'll get into this in a bit, is what they do is they create, and I, I this was a term that I introduced on the show a few weeks back, they create their own fascist fan fiction mm -hmm. that literally turns whatever is happening in the real world on its head. Up is down. Nothing makes any sense. And they just constantly repeat lie after lie after lie after lie with zero regard for the truth when they do it. Their entire platform is not let's think of policies that could help the American people. Their entire platform is let's lie to the American people and let's continue to just shovel these lies with such speed that they can't even understand what the difference is between the truth and a lie because we've said our lies so many times. It's just a fire hose of lies. We'll get into that in more detail in a bit. I'll pass it over to Jordy though to say what's up. What's up? <laughs> now, here's the thing, Brett. They live in the MAGAverse, right? We, we use that phrase all the time, and sincerely, they do. They live in their own echo chamber. They live in their own bubble where they believe their own SHIT. I said a swear word. I did on The Brother Show. And so when you look at things and you see Donald Trump making these ridiculous statements that we'll get into, all of a sudden, the Stephonics of the world, Marjorie Taylor Greens, like, they're in the position where they have to defend the indefensible and just make up the most bizarre lies to try and make it seem like the guy isn't going through some serious cognitive decline. It's a really scary thing when these folks, I'm talking about this MAGA Republican Party, when they don't live in any semblance of reality. Not only do they not live in any semblance of reality, to Brett's point, they are creating their own kind of fictional universe where Donald Trump does things that he's never actually done and everything was perfect and he always saves the day. And it is very much like these kind of Kim Jong-un kind of narratives. And kind of speaking of Kim Jong-un, before... Donald Trump's speech. This is happening right as we're going live. You know, Marjorie Taylor Greene, these events all kind of follow the same format. There's this like right wing media that follows him around. And then Marjorie Taylor Greene, usually her, she gives these interviews right before everybody goes on stage. So here's what Marjorie Taylor Greene had to say. And this is this type of fan fiction. And here she basically talks about how Donald Trump crossed the demilitarized zone, basically looked at Kim Jong-un in the eyes and ended Kim Jong-un's reign, stopped Kim Jong-un in his track right there. And this is the type of things that they say. And meanwhile, when you actually listen to what Donald Trump is saying at his speeches, he like praises Kim Jong-un. Kim Jong-un is great. He sends me love letters. I have a love affair with Kim Jong-un. He says the most insane things. But here's what Marjorie Taylor Greene just said moments ago. Play the clip. President Trump is the one that sh gave shock and awe to the whole world when he walked across the DMZ line, hand extended, shaking hands with Kim Jong-un, ending Little Rocket Man's reign. I mean, no, that, that, that never happened. It didn't end Little Rocket Man's reign. Donald Trump sucks up to Kim Jong-un. Donald Trump's, there he is right there, saluting Kim Jong-un. Donald Trump 
put together a book of like letters he received from Kim Jong Un instead of like writing his own book. Like that didn't happen. And that's though what these MAGA people believe. And, you know, when we talk about what he said about Nikki Haley, part of this fan fiction is that on January 6th, Donald Trump sent 10,000 troops or offered 10,000 troops to Nancy Pelosi. It was Nancy Pelosi's fault for not accepting these 10,000 troops that Donald Trump ordered the Defense Department to uh, give to Nancy Pelosi. So it was Nancy Pelosi's fault. It's an internally inconsistent conspiracy theory also, because Donald Trump then also says, well, the insurrectionists were patriots. It was patriotic and peaceful people. And then it's also the FBI was involved. It was a, it was a Fed surrection. Like they can't get their story straight, but nor does it even matter. And then we have like the actual under oath testimony. This is of Chris Miller, Donald Trump's acting defense secretary at the time, who was specifically asked under oath about this 10,000 troops thing that Donald Trump spreads this unhinged conspiracy claiming that Nancy Pelosi turned it down. So it was her fault, the January 6th insurrection. So we have Donald Trump's own guy on tape, like the facts, right? The facts have to matter. This is the, like when President Biden goes, this is the United States of America. That's what he's saying. Like, what are we doing here? Here, just play this clip from the January 6th committee, the testimony from Chris Miller, Donald Trump's acting defense secretary during the January 6th insurrection. Play this clip. I just want to be clear here that it, it, since then, in February of 2021, Mark Meadows said on Fox News, Fox News that, quote, even in January, that was a given. As many as 10,000 National Guard troops were told to be on the ready by the Secretary of Defense. Is there any accuracy to that statement? I'm not, not from my perspective. I was never given any direction or order or knew of any plans of, of that nature. So I, I was surprised by uh, seeing that publicly. But I don't know the context or you know where it was. So, no, there was no. We obviously had plans for activating more folks, uh, but that was not anything more than contingency planning. There was no official message traffic or anything of that nature. So, so just so we're, we're clear, you did not have 10,000 troops, quote, to be on the ready prior, for January 6th, prior to January 6th. Uh, a non-military person probably could have some sort of weird interpretation, but no, to answer your question, no, I, that was not uh, part of my plan or the Department of Defense's plan. And just that the rest of his statement was, quote, that was a direct order from President Trump, and yet here is what we see, all kinds of blame going around, but not a whole lot of accountability. And to be, to be crystal clear, there was no direct order from President Trump to put 10,000 troops to be on the ready for January 6th, correct? No. There was, yeah, you're, that's correct. There was no direct, there was no order from the president. And some great questioning there because even Chris Miller tried to wiggle out of it and say, well, there could be a weird non-military interpretation. And then the questioning was, just to be very clear, there was no order at all. And then finally, Chris Miller goes, no, there was no order at all. By the way, if there was an order and Nancy Pelosi turned it down or anybody turned it down, that would piss me off. I want to know what the facts are, right? So I feel so betrayed when I am lied to. And again, this isn't some democratic talking point, some Midas touch talking point. I'm just playing you the audio recording of Donald Trump's own acting defense secretary who would have been responsible for it, who denies what Donald Trump says. It's, it's right. just that simple. And frankly, the, one of the biggest reckonings we have to deal with with the current state of our country is that such a large portion of the country does not even live in reality. And, and they purposely consume media and spread lies nonstop that just report things that are completely the opposite of what they are. Like you speak to these people, they will go on January 6th, peaceful protest. 
peaceful. Oh, but also it was Antifa who attacked the Capitol on January 6th. And it was also the feds. It was a fed surrection. The feds were involved. The feds were the people who actually attacked the Capitol on January 6th. But, oh, wait, the people got arrested. Oh, those people. No, those are the patriots. The patriots got arrested. The January 6th hostages. Is that your We need to clear the part of them, the but not the feds. We need, we need a part of them. No, I mean, there were democratic plants. The democratic plants were the violent ones. And then you could go down the list and it's like literally everything. COVID. Oh, COVID the hoax. Oh, COVID the hoax. Take your deworm, dewormer. Take your ivermectin for COVID. <laughs> That's what works. Not the vaccines. Oh, the vaccines. The vaccines kill you, actually. I mean, the vaccines actually kill you. You want to take some horse medicine. That is actually the right thing to do. You want to take hydroxychloroquine, which we've since found has led to the deaths of like thousands and thousands of people because Donald Trump and these MAGA people told people to take hydroxychloroquine. Trump, he gave us the most respect around the world. Everyone respected. He got laughed at. He literally laughed got at. laughed at. And if you look at all of the polls about our respect on the world, because this is quantifiable, you could actually track these with data. All the polls show that America was like the least respected ever when Donald Trump was president and the second president Biden became president, it shifted right back with like somewhere near 80% of the world respecting Joe Biden. And it was like 20% for Donald Trump. And you could go through all these MAGA leaders, Marjorie Taylor Greene, Sandy Hook, hoax. Anytime there's a school shooting now, it's a hoax. The earth flat. That's like a new MAGA thing. Flat earthers. The earth is flat. There's a conspiracy to put globes on TV, globes in classrooms to trick people because actually the world is flat. All the news you consume, it's actually, that's fake. Big Russia, coming at you. big, big globe is coming at you, Jordy. We got the, we got the flat earth. We got we have crime at record levels, even though crime is declining. You have an invasion. You're being invaded. These immigrants are taking your jobs. Oh, and your gas stove. They're coming for your gas stove. The new thing this week was there was that group Patriot Front. They were marching on the streets again, and they're like an actual Nazi group that like wields Nazi flags and things like that. Every time the Patriot Front marches, these MAGA people say that they are feds or say that they're democratic plants and they go, well, then why do we never see their faces? They're always wearing masks. They're wearing masks to try to hide their identities. And if you took a two second Google search, you could Google the Patriot front. You'll find out that many of the people in this organization have been arrested numerous times. And guess what? In their mugshots, they're not wearing the masks. We know their identities. We know that they are right wing MAGA extremists. So they could continue to try to spin every single thing, every single issue in the United States of America. But we need to constantly push back with reality. And that is just one of the issues, though, is that it's not only these fringe figures that are pushing these lies, no matter how big or how small. It's not only happening in like online message boards and stuff. It's then being echoed and promoted and legitimized by these Republican politicians who are choosing political expediency of, I am going to spread this lie. I'm going to spread this conspiracy theory, even though they know better, rather than actually confront their own party and say, no, that's not true. That's a conspiracy. As a leader, as a leader, I need to give it to you straight. Like that famous clip of John McCain from the election with President Biden, when the person said, I can't vote for Biden. He's a terrorist. He's a, and, and, McCain said, no, actually, that's not true. That's not true at all. That's a lie. That's a conspiracy theory. And we need leaders like that today. That's what we're missing. And do you know what Donald Trump has so normalized? Go back to the debate stage in 2020. Proud boys, stand back and stand by. That whole like ethos of Trumpism has just like ingrained itself into this current day MAGA Republican party where they feel like all of a sudden they have to defend these very hateful people like the Patriot front or the proud boys and make excuses for them and lie and lie for them when they could just so easily denounce them on a global stage. And all of a sudden they'd attract way more voters. I'm not telling them what to do here because all of the pro-democracy folks are coming this way to the democratic side of things because ultimately no one wants to be walking alongside the Patriot front. No one wants to be walking alongside these proud boys because that's so just disingenuous about what this country's founded on. Here's the By thing. The way, stand back and stand by is like 
an appetizer to an appetizer compared to the stuff they're saying now. I mean, if they said stand back and stand by, that would be a relatively normal thing that Donald Trump would say at this point. At this point, Donald Trump's out there singing songs with the Proud Boys. I mean, at this point in time, he's saying that the Proud Boys are like heroes and patriots right now. And I think that what the media is not doing in this bold sides isms is look, just show the footage, right? Just mm -hmm. show what's happening in New Hampshire. Like, can you do that? The media wants to kind of normalize the behavior of Donald Trump without even showing the clips like here. And, and finally, over the weekend, I think we saw for the first time the media starting to talk about Trump's cognitive decline and showing that one clip where Donald Trump repeats Nikki Haley over and over. And you and know over what it again. took, Ben, by the way? Do you know what it took? It took our endless pushing of them, A, our constant every single day, day in and day out, highlighting these things. But you know what it also took? It took a Republican to say it and call it out for the media to acknowledge that it was an issue. It took Nikki Haley finally at this late stage in the New Hampshire primary going, this guy is cognitively declining for the media to go, oh, a Republican is saying it. I guess it's okay if we now report on the uh, on Donald Trump's cognitive decline. They're always taking like the sides of Republican messaging and they take their cues from Republicans as to what's palatable for viewers, even the most quote unquote liberal networks. Like you notice that they always go into the diner, speak to like the wackiest cult member and try to normalize. You see, look at how Donald Trump is expanding his base to this random person in the diner and never do the story about how the pro-democracy coalition continues to grow, how there really isn't the same distinctions anymore between like progressives, liberals versus like conservative because these MAGA Republicans ain't conservative at all and there's a broader pro-democracy coalition. They, they, they never highlight that. They always say, here's a new type of evangelical voter, like a cult member. They've been around forever, cult members. Cult leaders have been able to fill up stadiums since the beginning of the United States of America. That doesn't mean that their ideas should be promoted or normalized. They should be called out. But folks, Donald Trump isn't even filling stadiums anymore like he used to. I mean, we, we could talk about what went down in New Hampshire this past weekend. You see right there a bunch of events in New Hampshire. One of the arenas that Donald Trump spoke at, they had to put curtains up over more than half of the seats due to the very light attendance. And they tried to kind of pack people around him in view of the cameras. But you still see all of these empty seats there. He used to be able to fill that exact stadium there uh, in New Hampshire. Governor Sununu pointed that out as well. Let's just take a look at some of these moments from this weekend speeches um, that Donald Trump gave. Any one of these things if President Biden said or did would be absolutely disqualifying. And they'd be absolutely disqualifying to me. If President Biden did any of these things I'm about to show you, I would probably say, you know what, even after I think all of the great things President Biden's done for our economy, all of the jobs that he's created, the Infrastructure Act, the PACT Act, I, I would say, you know what, there's there's some real serious issues going on. So the first one I'm going to play you is the one that got a lot of attention, but I'm going to show you others that didn't get like any attention. But we'll show you this one where Donald Trump confuses Nikki Haley and Nancy Pelosi while spreading a debunked conspiracy theory ostensibly about Nancy Pelosi, but keeps on saying Nikki Haley's name over and over again. Nikki Haley, Nikki Haley, Nikki Haley, Nikki Haley. Here, play this clip. Never reports the crowds, you know. By the way, they never report the crowd on January 6th. You know, Nikki Haley, Nikki Haley, Nikki Haley. You know, they did you know they destroyed all of the information, all of the evidence, everything deleted and destroyed all of it, all of it because of lots of things like Nikki Haley is in charge of security. We offered her 10,000 people. Nikki Haley's in charge of security. We offered her 10,000 people. By the way, I just wanted to show you before what Donald Trump's acting defense secretary, Chris Miller, said, just to show you how unhinged the conspiracy is that Donald Trump spreads about Nancy Pelosi. 
But Donald Trump there kept on saying Nikki Haley was given 10,000. <laughs> it was like he was trying to summon Beetlejuice. Nikki Haley, <laughs> Nikki Haley, Nikki Haley. <laughs> like Somebody it wasn't, over it. you know, one, one, one time you could be like, all right, he got, he, he got some names confused four times. That's a, that's an issue. But then sure you have next one going good. out there defending it. Yeah, you know, Elise Stefanik says, I'm sure, Brett, if we if we have that clip that you could find, Elise Stefanik then says, look, what you just saw, Donald Trump did that on purpose. That was Donald Trump at his best is what you just watched. And Trump was comparing Nikki Haley to Nancy Pelosi with this unhinged conspiracy. And that's what Donald Trump was actually, ah, ah, okay. that, that's ah, what okay. Donald Trump was doing here. This is a least of, and this is what I mean, living in this like fictional world of like, that's just not what's, that's not what happened there. But Brett, if we have this clip of Elise Stefanik, let's, let's play it. That isn't a mix up. Uh, the reality is Nikki Haley, she wasn't speaker. Nikki Haley is relying on Democrats, just like Nancy Pelosi, uh, to try to have a desperate showing in New York, in New Hampshire. But he was so talking President about January 6th. President Trump has not lost a step. He is a stronger candidate, stronger than he is today, than he was in 2016 and he was in 2020. Stronger. He's so powerful. He's stronger today than he was back then. He did that on purpose. That That's what he, Nikki Haley, Nikki Haley, Nikki Haley. That's his brilliance right there. And he's such a stronger candidate that he then goes and compares himself and his criminal conduct to that of a rogue cop and a pedophile priest and saying that he needs absolute immunity the same way a pedo priest gets absolute immunity, which they don't. I don't even know what immunity he's referring to when it comes to pedophile priests and rogue cops. But this is part of Donald Trump's stump speech saying that, you know, there are there are bad cops and there are bad priests, but, you know, they get immunity for a reason. And so I should get immunity here. Pl play this clip. But it's a little bit like the police. So you have a rogue cop. You know what a rogue cop is? Very seldom, but you have bad people. You have people, no matter where, no matter what. In the church, you have some people that aren't so good, right? But you have people, a rogue cop or a bad apple, whatever. And what they do is they make it so that you catch, so that it can't happen. And therefore, everyone else is allowed to commit crimes, murders, like at levels that we've never seen before. No, we're going to have to do this immunity for the president. If you have a president that doesn't have immunity, he's never going to be free to do anything because the opposing party will always indict him as soon as he leaves the White House. And you can't let that happen. You can't. You take away all of the power of the presidency. It'll be a different country. I mean, that's weird. It's unhinged. What in the world is he even talking about with, with the bad priests that the church and the rogue cops? They don't have at all absolute immunity. They do not have absolute immunity, Brett, at, at, at all. I want to show you this next clip right here, though. And this is what Donald Trump's been saying the whole weekend, making this comparison as well uh, to rogue cops. This was the night before, right? He spoke at Rochester, then he spoke at Manchester, and he's going around all of New Hampshire with this message. That he should get absolute immunity like pedophile priests or bad priests at the church and rogue cops. And the media never really commented on that one because Nikki Haley, Nikki Haley, Nikki Haley didn't point that one out. But I mean, how do you ignore someone saying something so utterly absurd? Brett, if we have this other clip of where Donald Trump said the same thing, this rogue cop comparison, let's play this clip. If we go back to being a country of law and order, have to do it. And you will have, very seldom, but you will have the rogue, we call it the rogue cop, the bad apple, and perhaps you'll have that also with president. But there's nothing you can do about that. You're going to have to give the president, you're going to have to allow a president, any president, to have immunity so that that president can act and do what he feels and what his group of advisors feel is the absolute right thing. Otherwise, you're going to have presidents that are totally impotent. And we've had enough of them already. We've had enough of them already. So having immunity is so important. And I hope the Supreme Court has the courage to do that, because otherwise you're just not going to be in a very strong position very long. It'll totally change our country, in my opinion. 
I hope the Supreme Court has the courage to do that. The exact same words he used about former Vice President Mike Pence. And then again, he's just straight up calling for a dictatorship. I don't know how else you could construe what those words are. Yeah, and he's dropped all pretense of like, I'm innocent, I'm allowed to do that. And he's now just full on, I need 100% immunity for my crimes. And he's even gone beyond that to the point where he's basically threatening the Supreme Court. And in many of these speeches, he'll say things like, my justices, my justices that I put there, they better do the right thing. I know that they will do the right thing. They will have the courage. They need to have the courage to do the right thing. Thing. If there was any other ruling on this other than saying that Donald Trump does not have immunity in these circumstances, then the Supreme Court would have just implemented a dictatorship in the United States, which is exactly what Donald Trump wants. And I think people need to really understand what a second Trump administration means. The second Trump administration would mean a full on dictatorship, a full on run of retribution in order that he would spend it never trying to actually help Americans or solve any problems that people are going through. He would spend every waking moment of his presidency trying to indict his political opponents, trying to arrest migrants and throw them into concentration camps like these are the things that he is openly openly saying and i just am not sure if everybody is listening to the words that are coming out of his mouth because by the time they reach people often they do get to them in a very kind of sanitized way that takes off the true cruelty of what he's promising you know it's why he references alfonso capone Right. This is mob speak. These are these are I wouldn't even say they're dog whistle threats. They're, they're just outright threats to the people who he put on the Supreme Court when he goes out and says this type of stuff. And Brett, exactly to your point, he's not even like saying I'm innocent. I didn't do these crimes. It's pardon me. Don't convict me. Let me, you know, continue to run. Let me take down this country. Yeah, I did those crimes. He's all but saying that. Right. He's never once said, I didn't do it. I'm innocent. Have you guys heard him say those words? Because I haven't. It's even, it's even weirder. Have you heard of a rogue cop? Do you know what a rogue cop is? A bad apple. A bad apple. It's a bad apple. You know, you know what a bad apple is? It's a really bad apple. Did you, did you guys catch SNL this weekend? They had a have fun. You, have, a, you, pretty... have you heard? Yeah. Have you have you heard of bad priests? You know, the bad ones, you know, the really bad ones in church? Me, I'm like that. You know what I'm talking about? And so I I need immune. Anyone needs immune, or you'll be impotent. Impotent. I, I'm I'm we're just literally watching a crazy person. And like every time I watch these things, I just want that's why that's why I love the Midas Mighty community. I just want somebody to say to me, this is freaking crazy. <laughs> this is crazy, crazy behavior. There's nothing normal about it. Oh, by the way, what else is he doing? Spending the speech defaming E. Jean Carroll, his rape victim. Yes, everybody, the leader of the Republican Party has already been adjudicated by a jury in May for raping somebody and now gives speeches mocking his rape victim. That happens in all of the speeches. And then posting, post, 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 post. 55 posts in a row mocking his rape victim. How absurd, how offensive, how disgusting can you be? I'll show you this one from Donald Trump's speech. But he says this in every speech, defaming E. Jean Carroll. Here, play this clip. That said terrible things from 30 years ago. He took me. I owned three, four buildings around it. I owned the hotel next to it. I took her. A totally fabricated story. It's all fabricated. And the lawyer is a political operative. He used to be very close to Cuomo. Do you ever hear of Cuomo? Have you ever heard of Cuomo? Here, here, have, you heard, here. have you ever heard about bad priests? Here's the have, message. Have, this, uh... Have you heard about rogue cops? And, and, and it's fabricated. I mean, he's talking a jury. A jury found Donald Trump liable for raping E. Jean Carroll, and that was affirmed by the federal judge. And Trump is now in a defamation trial because he continues to defame his rape victim. 
and the media is too scared to just say what it is that we just said, and they want to normalize that behavior. In what world is that normal at all? Certainly not one that I want to live in in the United States of America or any other peace-loving, normalcy-loving country. So we're at 276 Look at that. membership right now. We are on our way chat, to Mark, unlocking right that vice president Harris emoji. We've got a lot more show, folks. Take our first quick break of the show. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Now, as the new years progress, we get obsessed with how to change ourselves instead of just expanding on what we're already doing right. Now, maybe you finally organized one part of your space and you want to tackle another, or maybe you're taking your supplements every morning and now you want to actually eat breakfast too. Well, therapy, it helps you find your strengths so you can ditch the extreme resolutions and make changes that really stick. Now, I've personally benefited from therapy myself. Therapy Therapy is helpful for learning positive coping skills and how to set boundaries. It empowers you to be the best version of yourself. And it isn't just for those who've experienced major trauma, it's for everyone because what you're going through matters. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Celebrate the progress you've already made. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Midas today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Midas. Typical children's vitamins are basically just candy in disguise. They're filled with two teaspoons of sugar, unhealthy chemicals, and other gummy junk growing kids should never eat. That's why Haya was created, the pediatrician-approved superpower chewable vitamin. While most children's vitamins are filled with 5 grams of sugar and can contribute to a variety of health issues, Haya is made with zero sugar and zero gummy junk, yet it tastes great and it's perfect for picky eaters. Haya fills in most of the common gaps in modern children's diets to provide the full body nourishment our kids need with a yummy taste that they love. Now, formulated with the help of nutritional experts, Haya is pressed with a blend of 12 organic fruits and veggies, then supercharged with 15 essential vitamins and minerals, including vitamin D, B12, C, zinc, folate, and many others to help support immunity, energy, brain function, mood, concentration, teeth, bones, and more. It's non-GMO, vegan, dairy-free, allergy-free, gelatin-free, nut-free, and everything else you can imagine. Haya is designed for kids of all ages and sent straight to your door so parents, you have one less thing to worry about. Now, as you know, I'm about to be a father and I'm on the lookout for the best possible vitamins for my child to take. I'm so happy I've come across Haya Health. The ingredients are amazing and I don't have to worry about sugar or gummy junk because Haya Health is made without that stuff and it still tastes great. We've worked out a special deal with Haya for their best-selling children's vitamin. Receive 50% off your first order. Now, to claim this deal, you must go to HayaHealth.com slash Midas. Now, this deal, it's not available on other websites. Go to H-I-Y-A-H-E-A-L-T-H dot com slash Midas and get your kids the full body nourishment they need to grow into healthy adults. Thank you to our pro democracy sponsors. Oh, the go. discount Hiya. code is in the Yo, description. Shout out BetterHelp. Honestly, amazing. Shout out Haya. Like I said, I'm about to be a dad, guys. I need to find vitamins that, that aren't sugar filled, that aren't junk. Haya is the perfect one stop shop there. So, links in the descriptions of the YouTube and the audio. Click them. We work really hard on the deals. Check it out. There's some great sponsors. We're, we're going to have to prepare the audience now because there's going to be a day where all of okay. a sudden, Jordy is not in the. Can I just say, like we're at we're at baby watch time. Like no, every not. phone call I get, like my heart drops a beat. Like I feel like I think it's like gonna happen, and so like we're on full on baby watch time. It could happen any moment. It could happen any day. A lot of people in the no, chat not, keep not, asking not, me. I'm not not sure why your wife calls you next to her, but that's conversation for another time, I guess. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> save, it for, save it for the after show. Patreon. Oh, we can talk about it. But I just, I just want to say, like, you, there could be a moment where 
We're just like Jordy had the baby and he's not going to be here for a little bit. So I just want to prep. I just want to prep the audiences on that now so they don't get angry at your at your two brothers over here. Let's get back into New Hampshire. <laughs> uh, we got Donald Trump in his speeches. He says this in all of his speeches. He claims he gets confused and misstates names and dates and does all of this on purpose. Hmm. He says this is just him being sarcastic. Yeah. Uh -huh. Let's play this clip. But I don't do it because what they do is if I'm sarcastic or like I, a lot of times I'll say, and President Obama is doing a lousy job, meaning that Obama is running the show. They'll say, Donald Trump doesn't know who our president is. No, no. Because cognitively, you know, I don't know if you saw, but a few months ago, I took a cognitive test my doctor gave me. I said, give me a cognitive test just so we can, you know, because you know what the standards were. And I aced it. I also took one when I was in. But I also took one when I was in the White House. No, I'll let you know when I go bad. I really think I'll be able to tell you because someday we go bad. But, you know, I've had and they always say like like Haley, she talks about, yeah, we don't need 80 year old. Well, I don't mind being 80, but I'm 77. That's a big difference. Big difference. They clap for him. I, it, it, it was like it's maybe a horrible example. So, uh -oh. me, just, uh -oh. <laughs> you sure you want to go through with it? I, 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 I do. I can't control myself. Like, 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 like Shamu the whale at Sea World. Like when it like this. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like I took, I took a cognitive test, everybody. And they and they clap for him. This this is the United States presidency. They're they're <laughs> clap. Yay! It's you know it's like watching like you know like like the like a, like a like a like a seal do a trick, and then it's like you know with the accordion hands, like yay! He passed the cognitive test. Everybody, you can identify an elephant. Oh, so it's so amazing. It's the first time I think we heard that he took a cognitive exam quite recently. And this man who, seems, who takes cognitive tests, this like man this, like this, take, like that frequently, right? Yeah, he it's takes almost like, like he's just trying to memorize the answers to them. It's like, it's like every few cognitive months. Cognitive test addict. Yeah. yeah. Yo, 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 give me another one. Give me another hit. I want another cognitive test. <laughs> you know, it, it, it's like growing up when you would like take like a lot of PSATs or whatever, just to like get you prepared for the actual SAT. That's what he just does with these cognitive tests. He's like, if I see a picture of an elephant, I'm going to have to point that out. Otherwise, it's over for me. My you know, gut is he could figure those... out the elephant. He could do, you know, he could do the basics, right? Like he could do the elephant. Like that's, that's probably okay. You know, if we, we, we made a graphic the other day of Nikki Haley and Nancy Pelosi as one of the things that would probably trip that's him up. Really quite funny, a, Brett. That, that was a that, really that, great graphic. <laughs> that would probably trip him up quite a bit. But when he gets to the second half of that test, when it's like countdown from a hundred by 10, I think that's where he gets real flustered. And I think he probably keeps taking the test and hopes next time. I'm going to figure it out. A hundred ninety. Damn it. I messed up again. And then, then he's got to call up Ronnie Jackson and say, Hey, could you give me a new uh, cognitive exam? I, yeah, I, I, need another, I, I need another hit of another cognitive exam. But, but by the way, you know, in, in, in all <laughs> seriousness, another hit of the cognitive. And I, I need another I cognitive. So, Ronnie. I was so close the last time. So his, so close. his father, Fred in 1991, was diagnosed with mild senile dementia mm. and started displaying symptoms at a, at a similar age to Donald Trump of kind of, you know, mixing things up like that. And, and, and so that, that is something that is out there though, that, that, that I do want to say here, Donald Trump uh, calls climate. Well, I'll let you listen to what he refers to climate, what he calls climate's a pretty, it's a pretty easy word, climate. I'm just going to, uh, on that cognitive test where we're talking about like elephants and giraffes, climate, I'm not sure anybody who refers to it this way, but, but play the clip. And by the way, they don't work well in cold weather and they don't go far. That's true. They don't go far, but it's certainly not uh, great for your climb, your climb. They call it climate. <laughs> they call it, they call what? it, who calls it? Who calls it what? And, and and here's what he has to say about forts. Donald Trump seems to believe that World War One and World War Two was fought on American soil in forts, 
And then he mentions Fort Benning, which was named after someone who wanted to secede from the United States. And he's upset. That's the only fort that he could remember uh, the name of. But here's what he has to say about, about forts. This is his knowledge of American history right here. Let me play this clip. Raised up those great skyscrapers, won two world wars. You know, we won world wars out of forts. Fort Benning, Fort this, Fort that, many forts. They changed the name. We won wars out of these forts. They changed the name. They changed the name of the forts. A lot of people aren't too happy about that. Defeated, he said, unacceptable, yeah. No, they changed the name of a lot of our forts. We won two world wars out of a lot of these forts. And they changed the name. It's, uh, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable that this is even real, that we're that we're actually watching this. And this is, you know, and Donald Trump had previously said that the Continental Army took over the airports. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah. This is somebody who is running for the highest office of the land and who uh, defeated Ron, defeated Ron DeSantis, though. You want to talk about that, Brett, that DeSantis is Ate now- his lunch, Ben. Ate his lunch. I don't even know what, to, from that moment- that DeSantis did that Twitter spaces with Elon Musk, which we predicted here. We said, okay, these Twitter spaces are super glitchy, especially when they first started. I was like, there's no way that DeSantis is going to be able to figure it out. DeSantis's voice is not the thing I'd probably want to accentuate, although I'm not sure what I'd want to accentuate if I was him to begin with. Like, why wouldn't you just roll this out like a normal campaign? I think he spent like $150 million dollars spending all of his time in Iowa. If you do it like on a per vote basis, it was like $6,500 per vote or something <laughs> per, per single vote. He would have been better had he just like handed out a hundred bucks to every vote. He would, have got, <laughs> he would have done far, he would have done far better just giving everybody a, a hundred dollars. But Ben, why, why appear on the Twitter space to launch the campaign? It goes back to our earlier conversation. These MAGA Republicans, they live in this bubble. They live in this Twitter bubble, this X bubble, where they think the conversations on there because Elon likes to amplify all these right wing extremists are the popular and the majority opinion. When you poll people, folks, you know, time and time again, you realize in real life, in fact, no, you know, women want to have their reproductive rights. They don't want those taken away. The LGBTQ community wants to have their rights. They don't want those stripped away. We want to make voting easier for folks. We don't want to make it harder. And so when DeSantis lives in this Twitter bubble, just like all these other MAGA Republicans do, very clearly and quickly, do you realize that their, their yeah. main points and their main agenda is not something that the American people actually want to abide by? Well, well Brett, neither, Brett, neither DeSantis nor even Nikki Haley very recently, they, they don't understand, I think, what the assignment is both in mm -hmm. Iowa or now in New Hampshire because... You know, two, three weeks ago, it seemed like Nikki Haley was surging. People looked at her as someone who was going to take on Donald Trump. And then even when she's taken on Donald Trump now and calling him out on cognitive issues, she's not like actually confronting him on, on you know, on, on what he's doing or what he did to this country. And I just think people are unfortunately looking at Nikki Haley because I wanted her to win New Hampshire. I still want her to win New Hampshire. I just think people are looking at her like, yeah, like she really just, you know, is, is just another Trumper. And she's, uh, well, she's, running, well, she's running a Christy light campaign at this point, right? Yeah. It's like it's she not wants to go in the attack mode, but then she's too scared to actually, you know, put the dagger in it and fully commit. Well, here's the thing. And, and DeSantis's campaign was doomed from the start. And, and, you know, as I saw, there were all these like New York Times headlines and stuff that were like, ignore DeSantis at your own peril. And then you had Elon Musk, you know, he did the whole disastrous launch that you guys were talking about. And then, uh, you know, as it became immediately clear that DeSantis was like the world's worst candidate, that the more people got to know him, the more people despise the guy. Uh, Elon Musk would also tweet things like, uh, the attacks don't seem to be landing on DeSantis the way they thought they would. Well, they were like very much landing on DeSantis in like the worst ways. And the thing is, all of these candidates just... Uh, they approach this election with such weakness. Like they are the world's weakest 
people on the planet. And they entered a Republican presidential primary and they decided we're not going to attack the front runner in the primary. And then they expected that they'd somehow look good in response. Meanwhile, you have Donald Trump on the campaign trail calling DeSantis like a groomer, making fun of DeSantis's wife, just day in and day out pounding the crap out of DeSantis, pounding the crap out of Nikki Haley every single day. And then when they're asked a question about Donald Trump, they go, oh, Donald Trump was the, actually, he was the best president we ever had. Actually, he was amazing and we love him. So why are you running? Like, why are you entering this? And yeah. so <laughs> that weakness was apparent from the very start. And the one thing that I will give Trump credit for is when Trump smells blood, he knows that he needs to go on the attack. And with these two candidates, he knew immediately how easy that they would be to pulverize. And let's start with DeSantis here. DeSantis drops out of the race just days after making the following statement. You can be the most worthless Republican in America, but if you kiss the ring, he'll say you're wonderful. You can be the strongest, most dynamic, uh, successful Republican and conservative in America, but if you don't kiss that ring, then he'll try to trash you. You know what? You deserve a nominee that's going to put you first, not himself first. That's the sound of DeSantis. Kiss in the ring just six days after making that show of force at the end of his campaign. I mean, how pathetic. He drops out. He immediately endorses Donald Trump. And if this doesn't sum up just how horrible his campaign was, on the way out, in his final message to voters, which he posted on Twitter or X or whatever, just to show you, like it comes full circle. It started on X, it ended on X. Both things were a disaster. The video he posts, he uses what he thinks is a Winston Churchill quote, but it turns out it's not even a Winston Churchill quote at all. Winston Churchill never said it. The quote is, success is not final, failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. And so he releases this video with this fake Churchill quote, which is called out by the International Churchill Society, noting that Churchill never said these words, that these words have been attributed to numerous leaders over the years, including Abraham Lincoln. Lincoln didn't say it either, but he never said the thing. So People started digging, like, where did this phrase even come from? And one of the funniest things about this all, one of the greatest, most hilarious ironies is that that quote came from a 1930s Budweiser ad. And here is the ad. You will see the quote towards the bottom of the copy on this ad. Success is not final. Failure is not <laughs> fatal. And so you have Ron DeSantis who made it his whole thing that he was going to be a guy who hated businesses and like wanted to attack businesses. He made Wait, it his whole thing. He was going to, he was going to attack Disney and he made it his whole thing that he was going to cancel Budweiser. I mean, I think this was during his campaign. He told the Florida legislature, he told the Florida state government to open a criminal investigation into Budweiser because Bud Light, their brand Bud Light, sent a couple of cans of beers to a transgender influencer. So he needed the, the power of the government in order to investigate Bud Light. And this guy ends his campaign quoting a freaking Budweiser ad. I mean, the karma of that is just so... So, so hilarious. So you know, the interesting thing, Brett, though, too, is that I also don't think DeSantis even understood, like, when to actually be running a campaign and when the campaign is, like, over. Because, like, actually right now, like, just moments ago, he's attacking Donald Trump more forcefully than he ever did that too. when we'll that. he was actually running the camp. Like, wh where was this DeSantis during the campaign? So Politico reported, and we I think we reported it first also. At we the, did report on, it first. On MidasTouch.com that uh, some Florida Republicans and the Republican CFO in Florida wanted to use $5 million in taxpayer Wanted dollars. to. They want to. They, there's a bill. There's a, This is there's an a actual bill. bill. It's not a theoretical thing. There is a bill that has been introduced that that would pay $5 million for Trump's legal fees out of Floridians' money. 
So the taxes that Floridians pay, they're going to take $5 million of that if this bill were to pass, and they would use it to pay Donald Trump's legal fees. And this was endorsed today by Jimmy Petronas, who is the CFO of the Florida government. He said, then they call it something like the Freedom Fighters bill or, or something absolutely ridiculous. And also the bill is like, just because I think people need to know about what they're doing in Florida. Like the bill that they have proposed, if that doesn't sound bad enough, the $5 million is just the starting point. The $5 million is immediately the bill passes. They give $5 million of state funds to Donald Trump so that he could defend himself from these criminal cases. He's, and he's already spent close to like $80 million from his political action committee. Yeah. And so th it was introduced by the state Senator Elena Garcia. It's called, you could look it up, SB1740. SB, look it up. Google it yourself. We're not making this up. SB1740. <laughs> it's called, they call it the Florida Freedom Fighters Fund. And we're they take state money and they give it to Donald Trump. This is a legitimate bill going through the Florida legislature right now. And so, so he could defend himself in like rape cases against him and, and, and attempts to overthrow the results of elections. And, and let me just get to where it gets even worse, because what the bill does is it also set it would set up a it would set up a process at the Florida Department of Motor Vehicles where the employees would be instructed for any time anyone renewed their driver's license or got a driver's license, there would be a box to tick to donate a certain amount of per your personal funds to Donald Trump in order to defend him in his legal cases. So it would make all of these DMV workers, these state government workers, fundraisers for Donald Trump. Like there is nothing more of government overreach for Trump's legal bills yeah, for his heinous Trump's conduct. legal bills. And so this is going through. It has a lot of momentum in the Florida state legislature right now, a Republican run legislature. Once again, look it up. Um, we're not making this up. SB 1740. So Ben, what was the Santis's uh, comment? Santis so finally Politico, tonight, so Politico posted Biden. the following. Some Florida Republicans want taxpayers to pay Trump's legal bills. And then about 40 minutes ago, when we first started the show, DeSantis responds and goes, but not the Florida Republican who wields the veto pen, actually standing up to this ridiculous thing with Donald Trump. And it was like, I agree with that, DeSantis, but like now you you could have been doing all of this like when you were actually running and now is when you've chosen to uh to, to actually stand up to Trump. You know, notably as well, I don't know if you've been seeing this, a lot of DeSantis voters, I think their eyes have definitely opened in a way that they hadn't seen before to the cult. I've spoken to DeSantis voters, I see DeSantis voters, you know, posting on their own message boards about how the Fox propaganda works for Donald Trump how um, they think that DeSantis was treated unfairly by right-wing media. And it's a very interesting dynamic to see the DeSantis people basically saying all these like Magadonians are living in such a cult. It's an interesting. Uh, yeah. It's an and, interesting it, and it takes dynamic. that, it takes that rift or that competition or whatever you want to call it in order for them to ultimately realize the cult that they were a part of. And, and then and you look at somebody like Nikki Haley, right? Nikki Haley had a brilliant window like a few weeks ago to bring this thing home. And we never know what's going to happen tomorrow in New Hampshire. New Hampshire has shocked people at uh, the polls before. There are some polls that show Nikki Haley down as much as like 20 points, like it's a total blowout. There are some polls that show Nikki Haley and Donald Trump neck and neck. We'll see what happens in New Hampshire. It's a very independent-minded state. But Nikki Haley seemed to have not totally realized there was an independent minded state and who her voters even were or are right. until very, very recently, because she over the past few weeks has continued to try to play both sides of it. And it wasn't until Donald Trump accused her of 
causing January 6th that she even showed like a little bit of fight. So like Nikki Haley a few weeks ago, and I'll work, I'll, I'll show Nikki Haley's attacks on, on, on Donald Trump, which I think are, are great, but yeah. a little, a little too little too late, Nikki, like you can't do this 48 hours to go until the New Hampshire primary, What's but that expression bread a day late and a dollar short. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like it's absolutely. And so you have a few weeks ago, you have Nikki Haley. She did the slavery line where she said, oh, the slavery wasn't the cause of civil. War. She refused to say the word slavery and she was knocked for it. Right. Then after like this is like a few days ago, they asked Nikki Haley, are you in a racist party? Are you as the Republican Party a racist party? And she only flubs that question. She then takes it to a whole other level and says that America is not racist. America has never been racist, never done anything racist. Here's this Nikki Haley clip on Fox. Are you a racist party? Are you involved in a racist party? No, we're, we're not a racist country, Brian. We've never been a racist country. Our goal is to make sure that today is better than yesterday. Are we perfect? No. But our goal is to always make sure we try and be more perfect mm. every day that we can. I know I faced racism when I was growing up, but I can tell you today is a lot better than it was then. Our goal is to lift up everybody, not go and divide people on race or gender or party or anything else. We've had enough of that in America. That's why I'm so mm. passionate about doing this. I don't want my kids growing up where they're sitting there thinking that they're disadvantaged because of a color or a gender. I want them to know that if they work hard, yeah. they can do and be anything they want to be in America. So then like not 24, 48 hours later, does Donald Trump go, oh, you said there's no racism in this country? Bet. <laughs> and he starts making up these racist nicknames for her, calling her Nimbra or, or something like that online because her birth name is an Indian birth name, Nimrata. And he goes now on Fox, Fox interviews him and Donald Trump is asked about the nickname and he admits that he does it to highlight the fact that she's her, her parents aren't from the United States. Like he just flat out admits, yeah, it's racist. What are you going to do about it? It just felt good to me. And with her, it's just something that came. It's a little bit of a takeoff on her name, you know, her name, wherever she may come from, but uh, it's just, what do you mean by that? What do you mean? Uh, it's a little bit of a takeoff. I look at her name. I look at a lot of people, you know, I do a lot of uh, names for people like Pocahontas. Uh, she said, my mother said, I look like an Indian. So I started calling her Pocahontas. Some people say I'm very good at that, but uh... I mean, look at look at the level of discourse that we're dealing with in the Republican Party, and it gets worse. And we'll show you some uh, even worse clips uh, coming up soon. But and how how is that real? Like, and don't get me wrong, I get Brett Bears. Like, what do you mean by that? What do you mean by that? But like, right. you're watching. I think I'm very good, very good at giving nicknames. I look at her, and I look at, and I say, "You're Pocahontas." I think I'm very good at that. I'm like, are we watching like, like, like a like a petulant first grader? Like, uh, no offense to first, like what, what, what in the world, what in the and, world is? That? And frankly, what Nikki, where Nikki Haley missed her opportunity, and we'll see what the polls, you know, the actual polls from the election say tomorrow, uh, Tuesday. Um, she needed to be forceful in who she was. If you look at the people who support Nikki Haley and you look at the independents and you look at the more moderate Republicans who are excited about her, they have they are a completely different demographic than the rest of the Republican Party, the rest of the Republican Party voting bloc. It's when you look at the normal like Republican Party primary goers, like most of them don't even acknowledge that President Biden is a legitimate president. When you talk to Nikki Haley voters, most of them do nearly all like eight or nine out of 10 Nikki Haley voters say, of course, president Biden is the president. And also you have Nikki Haley voters. We have some polls saying that more than half of the Nikki Haley voters will vote for president Biden in mm -hmm. the general election. I've seen some polls say as many as seven or eight and 10 Nikki Haley voters would vote for president Biden in the general election. So if you even have under even a basic understanding of who your base is and why you are in this race, then you should make that your thing. You should passionately come out and say that you are an actual law and order candidate. You should actually come out and you should say Donald Trump is a criminal. Donald Trump 
is causing chaos. Donald Trump wants to take away your rights. Donald Trump wants to take away your freedoms. He had his chance. He blew it. He blew the economy. He messed up everything that he did. This is not a man with the temperament that we want in order to lead the country. And Nikki Haley like refused to do that until Donald Trump actually came out and said that Nikki Haley caused January 6th. Then finally, she decided, okay, I'll, I'll fight back a little bit. But it's that endless wavering of her where she's like, oh, actually, slavery, civil war, uh, who knows? Who knows? Who, who knows? No, if you're that candidate that's trying to play to like normal voters, normal, quote unquote, normal Republicans or independents, you can't then also be trying to appease the crazy people. I'll, I'll show you one more clip and then I want to show you Nikki Haley fighting back a little bit. And then we'll show you how President Biden took her words and made the most perfect ad fighting back against Donald Trump using Nikki Haley's words. I thought it was a brilliant piece. But just to show you the level of discourse that's happening now in the Republican primary, of course, after all this, what happened? Uh, Donald Trump challenged uh, Nikki Haley to a dementia test today. That's 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 what happens as we are heading into the. Uh, the that's the that's the 2024 version of uh, challenging someone to a duel. Yeah, I challenge so, you to a dementia test. So, I have a new nickname for uh, for Trump, by the way. I heard you guys talking about the syphilis stuff on the last episode. Mm. His new nickname is Sniffleus. Sniffleus is Donald S Trump's. Sniffleus is good. Now I never said that Donald Trump had syphilis. No, I, I know, I know. We were, but we were. Who, James, who James, 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 Car James, James Carville, Carville yeah, said that. Mentioned it. We didn't say that. Apparently, some doctors. Carville said it. It was widely reported that Carville had said it. Uh, and then, due to you know Donald Trump's just endless sniffles. I think Sniffleus is a great nickname for him. All right, here's that Here's that clip. Um, so Nikki Haley says now she has the two-person race that she's always wanted. She has been coming after you strongly in the past few days. It's worked both ways, um, and you've come after her as well. She, she keeps bringing up your age lately. What do you say about that? Well, I think I'm a lot sharper than her. I would do this. I would sit down right now and take an aptitude test, and it would be my result against her result, and she's not going to win. She's not going to even come close to winning. Uh, in fact, when I heard the word cognitive, you know, I've taken two of them now. I took one with Doc Ronnie, who's now a fantastic, you know, White House doctor and a fantastic uh, congressman from Texas, Admiral, the White House doctor, Jackson, Ronnie Jackson. And he's uh, now a great congressman from Texas. I took uh, one then and I took one recently. I think the result was announced and it was I aced it twice. I aced it. But I would say that, you know, I've actually called for a cognitive test for anybody running for president because I actually think that's a good idea. It would be nice to have an intelligent person be president. Uh, but uh, Nikki you, Haley should have been like, bet, like, let's do it. <laughs> bet. Let's record it. We could go side by side. We'll even have Dr. Ronnie. Ask us the question, Dr. Ronnie, who, by the way, Donald Trump says is a White House doctor. And if you're speaking about your cognitive abilities, you might I'm just saying you might not want to say that he's a White House doctor when he hasn't been a White House doctor in like six years. Uh, but uh, that's just a classic sniffleless behavior there, Jordy. Behavior. It's sticking. It's sticking, brothers. Anyway, we'll be back with some more Sniffleus. Oh, and oh, by the way, has everybody signed up for the Midas Touch newsletter? Oh, I have. Yeah, that's MidasTouch.com slash newsletter. Whoa, you guys did that you synchronized. That's MidasTouch.com slash newsletter. It's completely free to sign up. It's daily. Uh, we recap the most important stories of the day uh, in case you miss them. And it's really excellent. The, the, the subscriber rates on that continue to grow day after day. Um, and it's all thanks to y'all. So yeah, definitely check Jordy, that out. How many members do we need to get the Kamala Harris emoji, Vice President So Harris. what did we decide in the beginning? I'm seeing some <laughs> conflicting. We, oh, so we did decide 650. Okay, so we're at 323 new members right now. So whatever, whoever could do the math of 650 minus 323 is how many more members that we need. Obviously I would not pass that portion in the cognitive test, but that wouldn't, I don't that wouldn't think, be your, it I don't be think your strength. Would pass it either. Um, so 620, 327. Three twenty. We need three hundred and twenty-seven more members to unlock the VP Harris emoji. Find us three hundred and twenty-seven new members to our YouTube channel during <laughs> during the break. We'll we'll be right back after this quick 
break. Hey, Midas Mighty. So a little while ago, we had the idea that we wanted to sell the best pro-democracy merchandise in the game for the Midas Touch Network. And candidly, we had no idea where to even get started. That's why I'm so glad that we found Shopify. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business, from the launch your online shop stage to the first real life store stage, all the way to the did we just hit a million order stage? Shopify is there to help you grow. Whether you're selling scented soap or offering outdoor outfits, Shopify helps you sell everywhere from their all-in-one e-commerce platform to their in-person POS system, wherever, whatever you're selling, Shopify's got you covered. Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers with the internet's best converting checkout, 36% better on average compared to other leading commerce platforms, and sell more with less effort thanks to Shopify Magic, your AI-powered all-star. We use Shopify at store.midastouch.com, and it has completely revolutionized our business. It allows us to easily manage our shop, view analytics, provide the best customer service, and streamline our entire online shopping experience from A to Z. We wouldn't be able to bring you all the products you know and love love without Shopify, and we can't speak highly enough about it. Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the U.S., and Shopify is the global force behind Allbirds and Rothy's and Brooklinen and millions of other entrepreneurs of every size across 175 countries. Plus, Shopify's award-winning help is there to support your success every step of the way, like they were there for us here on the Midas Touch Network. Because businesses that grow, grow with Shopify. We can attest to that. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash Midas, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash Midas to take your business to the next level today. Shopify.com slash Midas. Today's episode is brought to you by 8sleep, the high-tech solution to your age-old sleeping issues. 8sleep's pod cover slips right over your mattress, bringing heating and cooling tech that keeps you comfortable and sleeping deeper for a better, more restful night. There's nothing worse than tossing, turning, sweating, or shivering in the night because you're not sleeping at the perfect temperature. This is why I love my 8sleep, which has greatly improved my quality of sleep and in turn improved my quality of life. Sleep science shows that in order to sleep at our best, our body temperature needs to drop in the early and middle part of sleep and rise in the morning. The pod cover will improve your sleep by automatically adjusting your bed's temperature based on your individual needs. The cover can be added to any bed like a fitted sheet and allows you and your partner to cool or warm your side of the bed as low as 55 degrees and up to 110 degrees. In addition to keeping you at the perfect temperature all night, the pod also tracks your sleep and health metrics. On average, pod users see their sleep quality improve by 32% after just a month on the pod. There's no better way to improve your day-to-day -day life than better sleep, and the easiest way to do that is with 8 Sleeps Pod 3. So start the new year right and invest in the rest you deserve with 8 Sleep Pod Cover. Go to 8sleep.com slash Midas and get $200 off plus free shipping on the pod cover by 8 Sleep. That's 8sleep.com slash Midas. E-I-G-H-T-S-L-E-E-P dot com slash M-E-I-D-A-S and get $200 off. Folks, this was a major game changer for me and I'm so grateful for my eight sleep and I know you will be as well. I'm grateful for our pro-democracy sponsors Absolutely right there. Absolutely love it. And that eight sleep, first off, Shopify, incredible. But eight sleep Shopify too. Incredible. Oh my goodness. I, we talk about eight sleep in our brother chat like every day, how much we love it. I, when the I eight talk sleep about turns on, it goes and I'm like, oh yeah, it's yeah. about things I are getting hot in here. I talk about eight sleep from the moment <laughs> I get off my bed. I'm like, I can't wait to be back in the eight sleep. Honestly, it's it's like it's a total game changer, like life changer. It's it seriously is. I, way, I, I, recent, I recently got mom in eight sleep. She loves it, obsessed with it. Also, so yeah, now we I, talk about eight sleep all the time too. I check, I check, I compare sleep scores with mom <laughs> every morning. Nice. <laughs> How's your sleep score go? No, for sure, it's it's the greatest thing ever. Anyway, let's let's let me show now, Haley. Uh, yeah, 
think final... people want to hear our political analysis over. <laughs> I could talk about this other the Nate for for weeks, for days. Um anyway, here is Nikki Haley finally punching back at Donald Trump uh for his cognitive moment. Last night Trump is at a rally. And he's going on and on mentioning me multiple times as to why I didn't take security during the Capitol riots. Why I didn't handle January 6th better? I wasn't even in D.C. In, on January 6th. I wasn't in office then. They're saying he got confused, that he was talking about something else. He was talking about Nancy Pelosi. He mentioned me multiple times in that scenario. The concern I have is I'm not saying anything derogatory, but when you're dealing with the pressures of a presidency, we can't have someone else that we question whether they're mentally fit to do this. We can't. Now, I'm not saying anything. That's the line. That's the line I picked up on, too. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, why? Even if what he was saying was Nancy Pelosi, like that is just false and unhinged and furthers. And what she should say is furthers a disgusting and treasonous narrative about what happened on January 6th. Mm -hmm. Donald Trump did not do any of those things. And it is shameful that he comes here in New Hampshire and sings anthems with the January 6th insurrectionists and makes money off of it. That is shameful, folks, to our great nation. And that was a shameful day in our nation's history that Donald Trump engaged in criminal conduct. Like, it's the easiest thing to say. We all know that's what happened. That's what happened on January 6th. You know, and then when you see people like Elise Stefanik, who was in the Capitol building, who was hiding because she was afraid she was going to get killed from the insurrectionists who now say the insurrectionists are hostages, are peaceful and patriot. She's concerned with the people who tried to kill her, who she was fearful that she was going to be killed by them. Those are people that she wants to, I mean, and then they go that they're law and order. They're not. And that's what Nikki Haley should have been doing if she wanted to win New Hampshire. And I think when people didn't know who she was, they assumed that's where she was going to go. And then when people started paying attention to her and they asked her some basic questions, they were like, oh, man, that sucks. <laughs> yeah, that like sucks. Yeah. There's just damn, no, we, no, damn, no spine we, we whatsoever. We thought you were like a more electable, you know, Christy, basically. Damn, you're not. Yeah. Christy man. Light. Christy Light. Yeah, you just got to be like, do we want to be the party of January 6th? Is that who you think the Republican Party should be? Or should we go back to being the party of small government, the party of personal freedoms, the party of Abraham Lincoln? Like, there's a pitch that you can make if you're Nikki Haley that, to me, seems like a pretty obvious pitch and shows that you have some spine and that you have some passion and that you care about the country. But the problem is it's too little, too late. They never do it. Then you have Elise Stefanik, who just wants to be Donald Trump's vice president. I would say Elise so Stefanik is so probably badly. the top contender for Donald Trump's vice president. So she is saying everything she can possibly to suck up to this individual. And it's those things. It's it's these spineless people who refuse to stand up to this disgusting movement of poisonous lies. That is the part that that really infuriates me on. It really makes me angry. Because I'm fine if we want to have different debates about what we want to do at the border or different debates about the proper kind of tax brackets or mm -hmm. the best way to get health care to the most people. Like, I'm good to have debates and disagreements about those things. But when you come out and when you are just a liar, when you are so craven and so opportunistic, that's something as basic as Donald Trump getting the names of two individuals completely wrong while he's spreading a deranged conspiracy theory. And you have the nerve to say, Oh, that wasn't a mix up. He meant to say that you've lost all credibility and you've completely sold out your country. You've completely sold out. And I hope that history remembers these people in the worst ways because right, the you have road Stefanik quote tweeting or quote posting an account called Johnny Maga. Okay. Do, do, do we have this is what John this was Johnny Maga's take. 
of things about what went down at the E. Jean Carroll trial today. From Johnny Maga, breaking. The judge in Trump's E. Jean Carroll defamation trial just delayed today's trial until tomorrow, the day of the New Hampshire primary, all in caps, election interference, like some weirdo cult account, Johnny Maga, right? And it'd be one thing, right, if it was just Johnny, Johnny Maga. Brett, but to your point, Elise Stefanik is one of the top leaders now in the Republican Party. She reposts Johnny Maga like they repost cat turd, an actual cat turd, and they repost these crazy accounts. And she goes, this is blatant election interference. Joe Biden and his Democrat cronies are the true threats to democracy. Trump 2024. Donald Trump's lawyers were the ones who requested the continuance. They asked for an extra day. E. Jean Carroll's lawyers did not want the proceedings to be continued until tomorrow. But the court over E. Jean Carroll's lawyers' objections granted the continuance request by Alina Haba. Donald Trump won the argument for continuing the case. Not only that, but the judge then continued it until Wednesday at Donald Trump's request. But rather than report on the facts that Judge Kaplan actually took into consideration what Alina Habba had to say, there was also juror number three was sick and potentially had COVID. Alina Habba claimed that she was exposed to her parents who had COVID. So the judge took that seriously. And also the request that tomorrow is New Hampshire and the fact that Donald Trump says he is going to testify and the judge is allowing Trump to testify on Wednesday, a day after the New Hampshire primary. And so everything that's being said in this post by Johnny Maga is false. And again, we talk about that John McCain moment, right? Where he took the microphone away from the Johnny Magas of that day, right? Mm -hmm. Now, Elise Stefanik and the Republican Party amplifies the Johnny Magas. They want to be the Johnny Magas and the cat turds. And everything here is a just a total and absolute lie of what went down in those proceedings. The case is now adjourned until Wednesday. Trial will continue then. Donald Trump will likely testify on Wednesday. He claims he's going to testify. We'll see if that really happens. He usually lies about that. But we'll see what goes down on Wednesday. But it was Trump's request to continue it from today. E. Jean Carroll said, look, all we need is six jurors. If one's sick, let's just go forward with the case today. That juror can be disqualified. It's fine. We'll just go with the other eight. And Trump said, no, no, no. Let's move it till tomorrow. That's what happened. And then they go out and they attack the judge. Sorry. And then and then they lie about it. And you'll see like every, every, every time something happens, you know, if you're like a social media user, you'll notice right away the same kind of 30 to 40 accounts immediately start posting the same things. And you know that they're all coordinating either in like a telegram chat or a signal mm -hmm. chat or whatever, and they get on message and they just flood the zone with the lie. Even if something like today, where it's something that Alina Habba got what she wanted, they flood the zone with a lie to try to turn this into some, oh, it's look, a weaponized government, look what's the Biden crony judge. Like None of it even ever makes sense. And the problem is, is that you now have politicians in the Republican Party who then further amplify that and legitimize that and lie to their And then, base. Brett, here's the thing too, though. Then when we call that out, that's somehow viewed as like a liberal bias. Uh, suddenly like, it's the liberal organization and the far like, left like organization. Lefty, like you know, a, what a lefty how position. Dare like, you. I'm like, I'm just showing the audio of what was said, or I'm just letting you know what the order was. That's not a lefty position. That, that's not a political position. And, there, and, and by the way, there is there are some issues that have some gray area, right? That you could debate things on that may have different interpretations. And there are certain things that are just straight facts. This is an example of something just being a fact. Alina Haba asked for the adjournment. There, She was said she had COVID, although she wasn't wearing a mask and she was speaking awfully close to Donald Trump the she whole time. Exposed, yeah. She said she was exposed. She, she was speaking to Trump very closely without a mask. Uh, the, ju 
the, the juror um, was sick and the judge granted Alina Hobbs request. That's all facts. And everything in that thing is a lie. And if you, you know, then report on the lie for people to say, oh, that's just what a liberal organization, the far left, are, it, it drives me insane. And you are playing right into what these people want. Just, just stop it. Anyway, should we see Biden fighting back, though? Because I like to see campaign Biden out there. I like to see him hitting back. And Biden over the weekend released two incredible, incredible, incredible campaign ads. The first one used Nikki Haley criticizing Donald nice. Trump for his cognitive moment and a very like kind of Midas style, short style, the way they did this too. Combining the moments that Nikki Haley was speaking about using Nikki Haley's words to basically just bludgeon Trump on the cognitive issue. And here's that ad. Last night, Trump is at a rally. You know, Nikki Haley, Nikki Haley, Nikki Haley. And he's going on and on mentioning me multiple times as to why I didn't handle January 6th better. Nikki Haley is in charge of security. We offered her 10,000 people. They don't want to talk about that. I wasn't in office then. They're saying he got confused. You have voter ID to buy a loaf of bread. You have, you have ID to buy a loaf of bread. What? What is? I'm driving over a road where it's almost all paper. And you know, you can see paper. I know paper. I know cans. But all the time now, we see whales washing up on shore because of the wind. Uh, Our veterans don't have cell phones, do they? He got confused. He got confused and said he was running against Obama. He never ran against Obama. And we did with Obama. We won an election that everyone said couldn't be won. Obama wants to, he doesn't want to talk about it. Well, you mean President Biden. So, uh, don't put our country at risk like this. I'm Joe Biden, and I approve this message. Uh, it's A plus, A plus work from the Biden campaign. And when, when you see it all together like that, too, like you see that there is something seriously, seriously, seriously wrong with this guy. Uh, we got to, we got to acknowledge, guys, it's the 41st anniversary of the Roe v. Wade decision. This is wow. like the first time that. You have the anniversary of Roe v. Wade without Roe v. Wade being law. Mm -hmm. And the Biden campaign released what I thought was one of their most powerful ads yet on this issue. And this is exactly the kind of ad that needs to blanket the airwaves in every single corner of this country. I don't even want to say anything about it. I just want everyone to watch. I'm an OBGYN in Texas and a mother of three wonderful children. Having this beautiful, messy, chaotic, but wonderful family, it's the joy of my life. I never thought that I would need an abortion for a planned pregnancy, but I did. Two years ago, I became pregnant with a baby I desperately wanted. At a routine ultrasound, I learned that the fetus would have a fatal condition and that there was absolutely no chance of survival. In Texas, you are forced to carry that pregnancy. And that is because of Donald Trump overturning Roe v. Wade. The choice was completely taken away. I was to continue my pregnancy, putting my life at risk. It's every woman's worst nightmare, and it was absolutely unbearable. We need leaders that will protect our rights and not take them away. And that's Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. I'm Joe Biden. And I approve this message. Super, super, super powerful. And I think I said it was the 41st. It's the 51st anniversary of the Roe v. Wade uh, decision. And, you know, the Biden campaign is making this a central issue to the campaign. And one of the things that I like to see is that Vice President Kamala Harris has taken charge of this issue. And she's going on a tour across the nation to promote reproductive freedom and the importance of codifying Roe into law. And so I want to play just a few of her statements. She was actually in Wisconsin today, um, and she's going to be in Virginia. She's scheduled to be in Virginia on Tuesday with President Biden. That will mark one of their first joint appearances of the 2024 campaign together, speaking to voters about this issue. Here's VP Harris commenting on Roe. Freedom. I believe is fundamental to the promise of America. Freedom of speech, freedom of worship, freedom of assembly, the freedom to vote. In America, freedom is not to be given. It is not to be bestowed. 
It is ours by right. By right. And that includes the freedom to make decisions about one's own body, not the government telling you what to do. Fifty-one years ago today, in the case of Roe v. Wade, the United States Supreme Court recognized the fundamental constitutional right to reproductive freedom. And for nearly half a century, Americans relied on the freedoms protected by Roe. However, 19 months ago, the highest court in our land the court of Thurgood and RBG oh took a constitutional right from the people of America, from the women of America. And now, on the 51st anniversary of Roe, we speak of it in the past tense. I mean, powerful, powerful stuff. I recommend, like, go check out the whole speech. Uh, you could look it up. I know it's on, like, the White House YouTube channel and, and elsewhere. But I thought Vice President Harris was on point in Wisconsin. I like that she's in Wisconsin. I like that they're going to be in Virginia. We see that they are intent on getting this message out, uh, which is so important. I like that they frame it around freedom. Freedom, freedom, freedom. The government should not be telling you what to do. Now... Other news, economic news. I feel like this is Groundhog Day because the Dow and the S and P 500 hit record highs again. I, I know you might be thinking, did I listen? To, am I listening to an old show? Am I listening to an old podcast? Because you just said this last week that the Dow hit new records, the S and P 500 hit new records. Well, the Dow Jones today closed above 38,000 for the first time in American history, and meanwhile, the S and P 500 also reached a record high today and had its highest close ever. So big economic news. And a lot of these rallies are on the fact that the fundamentals of the economy are actually now quite strong. Despite the doom and gloom, despite the Bloomberg report a little over a year ago that said there was a 100, 100% chance that there would be a recession. Now we're seeing every single month record GDP growth, record job growth. We're seeing consumer confidence soaring to record highs. So it's not just the stock market that's, you know, that's just one indicator. But when you look at these indicators of wage growth, when you look at the indicators that, that I just described, they're all trending in the right direction and they're all like at record levels right now. And the American people are finally starting to actually feel it. They're trying to feel it in their pockets. And so that's why the Dow and the S&P today, uh, you know, had this run. And that's even before the Fed's going to cut interest rates, which, so we true. Expect, that's so true. Which, which we expect to happen soon. And so from the standpoint of in just kind of a normal, calm way, going about doing the job of leadership, I just want a stable country, right? I, I don't want to wake up with all of this kind of chaos. I don't want to wake up having to hear Donald Trump every day talk about climb, and as they call it, climb. They call it the climb. And compare climb. himself to pedo priests and say why he deserves absolute immunity and, and, and engage in all this kind of cruel conduct and talk about vengeance. I don't want to, I don't want that for this country. I just want to go about my day to, to, to do the things that I like to do and you know, I, I, I don't know why that's presented as weakness when it comes to kind of President Biden, that he doesn't go up there and act like a fool. Like, I don't think acting like a fool and behaving the way Donald Trump does, that's not alpha. That's not strong. That's like what weak people do who want to pretend to be smart or pretend to be strong or, or pretend to act tough. Like that's, that's just not how you actually, you know, you know, act and behave with all of this chaos and the hands and the stupid comments. It's just like, it's like, no, you know, and then you just even look at the things that like Republicans are trying to focus on now as even though they were rooting for the MAGA Republicans were rooting for actual harm to impact our country when it comes to the economy and that's not happening. So like, what are their kind of two lines of attacks now? Like 
they're all built on on kind of pretty much lies. I mean, one is like Donald Trump gave us energy independence, drill baby drill, and it's about drill, drill baby. baby drill, drill baby drill, drill baby drill. Like that's one of their kind of constant lines, right? But right now, both oil and natural gas production in the U.S. are at all time highs, and at the same time, President Biden is still taking unprecedented efforts to address climate change while drill baby drill and having oil and natural gas production at all time highs and having gas prices remaining at relatively low levels now compared to recent years, right? Like that's, that's a fact. And of course, the other thing is, you know, the MAGA Republicans and their media like Fox and elsewhere constantly talking about the border as an invasion, invasion, invasion. They often show kind of videos that's not even of the United States-Mexico border. They show like other borders um, and they don't accurately reflect what's going on. But nonetheless, I recognize that the border is an issue. And you know who also does? President Biden and the Democrats. That's why they are trying to provide the resources to the border that MAGA Republicans in the House are blocking, intentionally blocking because Donald Trump wants it to become a political issue for them that they could go and constantly whine about. So they want to use it as they want to use it as an issue and not actually solve the problem. And I think fundamentally there has to be some civic education so people understand how it is that like bills become a law and that ultimately to get these resources to the border you need to pass these bills. You need to turn them into a law and President Biden needs to sign it. And you need both chambers, the Senate, which is working on bipartisan solutions and the House led by MAGA Mike, which is just blocking it from happening. And President Biden trying desperately to get resources to the border. He's trying to get things done right there. And by the way, I didn't even, do you know this stat though? It's never reported about. And I think probably because I think Biden probably doesn't want to emphasize this fact. But if you just look at the data now, this data may be upsetting to you. It, it, you may not like the data, but we talk about data here. Brett, did you know, and Jordy, that the Biden administration physically removed more migrants from the U.S. than any administration in history? Did you know that? Did you even know that? It's like reported like it doesn't happen. That there were almost never that. 5 million Title 42 expulsions under Biden which is 35 times as many expulsions as people put into the remain in Mexico policy under Trump. Like, like that, that's not report. Now you may look at that data and say that make, why are you doing that Biden or whatever? But, but that data is like never reported the same way. There are these narratives out there that somehow there isn't this drilling, you know, taking place when, when there is under any type of metric, any type of ones, even the one that they claim Trump is strong at, President Biden has done a better job and has been more competent at it than Donald Trump you know, by far. And, and that brings me ultimately to the Supreme Court ruling on, on the border, um, which happened today, five to four decision, where the Supreme Court has granted the Biden administration's emergency request to be able to remove the inhumane and dangerous impediments and razor wires that were set up by Texas Governor Greg Abbott along the southern border to try to act like a performative tough guy that was actually killing people. You had Justice Thomas Alito, Gorsuch, and Kavanaugh. They dissented. So it was actually Justice Amy Coney Barrett along with Justice Roberts who joined the Democrat appointees on the Supreme Court as the swing votes. It's a temporary victory for the Biden administration, but it's in the province of the federal government to actually have a comprehensive policy and not a cruel policy that tries to actually kill people. You And you have Abbott basically saying that he would want to kill migrants. We're doing everything but shoot them, he basically said. He said... And what you need, though, is not this performative tough guy thing. You need comprehensive solutions. And President Biden is trying to implement that. But like on everything, MAGA Republicans continue 
to obstruct. So I thought that was a good surprising ruling by the Supreme Court. And there is that bipartisan bill working its way through the Senate on the border and Ukraine. And we're going to see what the House does uh, on that when, when it goes before them. But, you know, look, President Biden's just trying to bring the sides together and come up with a deal. And is a deal going to be perfect? No. Is there going to have to be compromise? Yes. But we should all as Americans want to try to find solutions mm -hmm. and be able to compromise. On I'm, I'm willing to reach compromises. I know the Democrats in the Senate are. I know the Democrats in the House are. In fact, I think Republicans in the Senate are, but not these MAGA Republicans who control the House right now, where you've got Marjorie Taylor Greene and Matt Gates and Jim Jordan and James Comer and MAGA Mike and the rest of Lauren and, and Fox News and, and Fox News, who dictates policy, who Laura Ingram will start her segment being like, and any Republican who were to support something like this, they better know. They like threaten them. They, they better will be primary. You will lose your seat. Like, they, like on a nightly basis, they are threatening them. And it's oh, the things that Fox says, like all of their reporting, reporting in quotes, mm -hmm. is in order to pressure members of Congress in order to try to shame them, try to scare them, or try to reward them when they do what Fox wants, when they make a scene, when they show Hunter Biden's nudes. Like uh, Fox is like, we got what we wanted today. And that's how they kind of play puppet master with the Republican Party. And that's some one of the biggest people who they are beholden to. I mean, you had Laura Ingram tonight about this very lawsuit, uh, about this ruling by the Supreme Court where you had Justice Roberts and Amy Coney Barrett siding with the actual pro-democracy justices on this issue in this 5-4 decision. And it should have been, by the way, it should have it should have been like a, a unanimous decision. Like, like there's a supremacy clause in the U.S. Constitution that they are clearly trying to gut right now. But you have Laura Ingram opening a Fox saying that this decision by the Supreme Court, you know what that means? The, the the Texas the uh, the House Republicans they should just completely stop negotiating now with the Democrats because the Democrats have declared war they've declared war on the people and then you have MAGA leaders you have Republican leaders openly speaking about secession and civil war and now we need to secede from the union like what they want to do is they want to try to create this constitutional crisis where they actually have like the Texas national guard fighting American border patrol agents. And they want this conflict to happen. They, they want it to escalate. And you even see the Texas GOP getting in there and fundraise off it. If you look at the Texas GOP social media right now, you will see them fundraising off the very issue with this message. They are saying, come and cut it. Uh, play off, come and take it. They cross out, take it, come and cut it threatening people, threatening U.S. Border Patrol agents that if they come and they remove these dangerous barriers, that they will in some way fight back. And here you see them with a fundraising link, fundraising for Greg Abbott here. It's just despicable from top to bottom. The incentives are all just bizarre because they're able to now raise money off trying to stoke a civil war, essentially. And the whole thing is based on the fact that a Republican dominant Supreme Court made a ruling that was in line with the Constitution by a very narrow margin. Like, you got to step back and realize that these are some bad people in this Republican Party. These are some bad people at Fox News. They do not have your interest at heart. They don't even have their own viewers or voters interest. They at hate heart. their viewers. This we is all the text message exchanges. They hate their viewers. They think they're stupid. It's just the it's just evil, evil, evil and stuff. Brett, when we have someone like happens. Democratic governor from the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, Shapiro, uh, on our show, what does he always talk about? Bring people together. How do we work with Democrats, Republicans, independents? How do we do great things for the people? It's never about when we, when we speak to these Democratic leaders, like how can we bully a marginalized group? How can we take away people's freedoms? How could we screw people? How could we come up with contrived conspiracies 
that like attack people's well-being. It's always like, what can we do to empower people? Like, how could we, how could we help you? Like, even in these Republican states where there are federal programs to deal with like helping people who are starving in the states, the Republican governors refuse to take the money, like and, and they just outright reject it. I mean, they are yeah, the summer programs for the kids. And you look at you look at Governor Shapiro here in the great Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. And what is he for? One, he's for, you know, making sure that the reproductive rights of women is, is safeguarded here. That's a big issue of his. And what else has he been doing? Universal lunches and, and breakfast for students like across the Commonwealth. It's all about what these Democratic governors has been to your point. How can we help? our community how can we help our people and yeah. then you see the dichotomy when you see you, you see what's going on in the red states and it's like what can we take away from these people how what culture war can we you know institute it's like night and day between the democrats and the republicans you have one party the democrats that actually want to be the adults in the room that want to help that want to you know get to the table and and work across aisles to figure out hey how can we help our people and then you have the Republicans who just want to fundraise off of whatever the heck the next culture war issue is going to be. And how can we strip the rights away? Absolutely. I want to remind everybody about our new newsletter. Make sure you sign up. It's MidasTouch.com slash newsletter. MidasTouch.com slash newsletter. Also check out store.midastouch.com for the best pro-democracy gear, 100% union made, 100% made in the USA. We almost hit our target to release the Kamala Harris emoji. We had 433 new memberships, close to 650. We will roll it over to our next show this week where I'm pretty confident we'll hit that 650 and then we will release the vice president Kamala Harris emoji. Then Excited for that. We've got our after show coming up as well. Make sure you subscribe to patreon.com slash Midas touch to become a member of our Patreon community. Again, we don't have outside investors here on the Midas touch network. So we try to come up with kind of fun and creative ways to keep on building this platform. One of those is through the emojis. The others are pro-democracy sponsors that you see. And the other is our Patreon community. And I think, are, are we at 14,000 patrons yet? It's definitely getting close there, but a lot of uh, a lot of patrons, patreon.com slash Midas Touch. And we will have a fun after show uh, coming up. Just want to thank all the Midas Mighty out there. I do feel a ton of momentum heading into 2024. And I just want to remind you the best way to kind of help out is just share these videos, share the channel. We're so close to hitting 2 million subscribers here on the Midas Touch YouTube channel. And also make sure you're subscribed across all of the Midas Touch platforms. We have an Instagram account that's growing as well, too. Just search for Midas Touch on Instagram. Make sure you're subscribed to the Midas Touch podcasts on whatever audio podcast device that you have. Subscribe there. Um, and... Uh, that's about it. So thank you everybody for watching. Thank you all so much. We really appreciate you, Midas Mighty. We're in this together. We'll keep uh, working to protect, defend, and preserve our democracy. And we'll see you on the next show. Jordy, almost Midas, to that. Take it away. MidasTouch.com slash newsletter. Subscribe. Sign up right now. Shout out to the Midas Mighty. The At Midas Touch, we are unapologetically pro-democracy, and we demand justice and accountability. That's why we're spreading our message to Convict 45. That's right, gear up right now with your Convict 45 tees and pins at store.midastouch.com. That's store.midastouch.com.